When performing the examination, it's important to palpate and feel and get the patient used to where you are and where it's standing. Starting with palpation of the spine is a good idea for dogs who you are concerned about spinal pain or neuropathic pain. Palpating both sides of the spine, gently feeling those paraspinous muscles with support from underneath is crucial. When palpating towards the pelvis, it's important to identify the wings of the ilium, palpate the lumbosacral junction, and determine if there is discomfort. As you can see in this patient, there is some lumbosacral discomfort on dorsal palpation. It is wise to reset the dog's position and make sure that they are well balanced. When palpating for neuropathic pain in the hind end, it is wise to start with checking conscious proprioception. As you can see in this patient, placing the foot in an abnormal position does not lead to correction. When then placing the patient, when moving the patient towards this side, you'll see the patient undergo a placing response. This placing response in this case is somewhat uncoordinated and takes a while to initiate. When retesting the conscious proprioception, you often have to be persistent, support well, and encourage the patient to place the foot in the abnormal position. When palpating for nerve pain, it is wise to examine the limb slightly elevated with good support. Start by flexing and extending the knee, flexing the hip, slight extension of the hip to loosen up that area. Once you're in this position, you then can palpate down and by feeling for the vastus lateralis and the biceps femoris, you'll identify the sciatic tract as it runs down the back of the thigh. By wrapping your hand around and above the knee, this being the patella site, you're able to put gentle, moderate pressure down the sciatic tract to feel for any hypersensitivity. In the popliteal fossa, just proximal to the, to the stifle is often where you'll see signs of discomfort. And in this patient, as we can see, that is, there is some discomfort on direct palpation over that site. Good girl. When moving forward to examine the thoracic spine and the radial nerve cervical intumescence, it's important to brace the patient, palpate the spinous area in the mid thoracic and cranial thoracic zone. Moving forward, you'll have your assistant adopt a more looser position and free up the front end so that you can free up and move the thoracic limb in relationship to the body. It's advantageous to check cervical range of motion with dorsiflexion, ventral flexion, lateralization to both sides, be firm but not aggressive. When palpating for the cervical spine, you can palpate the wings of the C1 vertebra from both sides, move down the cervical cord, palpating the vertebral structures. When you reach the C6 area, you will palpate the, the lateral uh, process of the C6 vertebra, and by stabilizing the spine, you can rotate that area slightly with your fingers underneath that transverse process. Spasm of the cervical musculature, as seen here, is indication that there is some hypersensitivity in this area. When palpating with the radial nerve, it's important to support the patient well, isolate the limb, and we start by mobilizing some of the joints 
in order to create some relaxation and familiarity with this process. Then extend the leg with the foot slightly off the ground. By palpating the tricep mass here, you'll feel the long head of the triceps, the lateral head of the triceps, and the radial tract runs between these two. At the level of the greater tubercle and slightly distal, the groove between these areas is where the radial nerve can be palpated. As you can see in this patient, there is a degree of hypersensitivity in this area. This should be absent in a normal patient. It's also important to check and observe to see if conscious proprioceptive deficits are present in the thoracic limb.